Mel Kuyper is not as confident in the Patriots drafting a quarterback as he was before free agency started. And the fact that it's coming out that the Patriots aren't in love with Drake May, and it looks like the commanders have fallen in love with Jaden Daniels, so he'll probably go number two. And the Patriots would then be left up with Drake May, Marvin Harrison, an offensive lineman, whoever they want at the number three position. But with Minnesota now having two first-round picks, number 11 and number 23... Trading back for the Patriots seems a lot more likely because you could probably get a Bo Nix, a J.J. McCarthy, or a Michael Penix at that 11 or 23 spot if they decide to trade both of those picks uh, to the Patriots, the Vikings would. So I want to know, do you think the Patriots should keep the number three overall pick or do you think they should trade back in order to you know gain a lot of capital and potentially fill multiple holes in this draft that they need, especially on offense? Uh, I think that they have to wait and see what quarterbacks are available when they get to the third pick. If either Jalen Daniels or Caleb Williams are available, then I think they should take one of them. If they're not and they don't, and they think that JJ McCarthy or, and they don't, they apparently they don't like Drake may. Uh, that's what I'm hearing. I, I didn't heard them say that, but uh, that's what I'm hearing. Uh, if, if uh, a quarterback that they like, uh, but don't think warrants a third round pick and they think we'll be there by number 11, then I think they should trade down. I think they should uh, take the two picks from Minnesota. I don't know what Minnesota's thinking. They must, do they love Drake may? I don't know. They need a quarterback. They That's need a quarterback. Sure. We know that, but do they love, do they want to sacrifice those two first round picks? I mean, that, that's a lot of capital. It is that's two, a lot of capital, two first round picks and the 23rd pick, you know, there are 32 teams, so it's 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 still quite high up there. There's still excellent players at 23. So there will be a quarterback at number 11. If the Patriots like Bo Nix, they like Michael Penix, they like J.J. McCarthy, Yep. Uh, then one of those three is going to be there for sure. So why not trade down? That would be my thought. I'm going to agree with you. I, unless, I, I, unless, as what? I say, Caleb Williams or Jalen Daniels are available. If they're not, then I would trade down. Probably no shot that Caleb Williams drops to number three. Yeah. And I don't think the Patriots would trade up to get the number one pick. I think it's way too much. And honestly, the Patriots don't have all that much unless you want to trade other Christian Gonzalez and Matt Judon and then your first round pick or something along the lines. You would have to give up so much to get a quarterback that, you know, who knows? Could be a bust. A lot of people think he'll be a bust, but he has incredible talent. Um, I'm not I'm, I'm not one of those people that are sold on Drake May. And uh, a close friend of mine brought this to my attention. I'll give him a shout out. You know who you are. Uh, it was a funny comparison. I, I want you to, uh, to to figure this out. So Drake May and this mystery quarterback, they have very similar stats. Drake May, an 18-10 and 10 record uh, in his career at UNC. Completion percentage, 64, nearly 65%. Passing yards per game, 286. Touchdown interceptions is 63-16. to 16. And uh, yards per attempt is 8.4. The mystery quarterback, which I'll name in a second, is 20 and 17, very first uh, college career record, a 63.8 uh, percent completion percentage, 277.9 passing yards a game, 92 touchdowns to only 23 picks in his college career, and finally more yards per attempt at 9.2. So I would say these stats are close enough. That they're, 92 to 63. Sorry, nine point, oh, well, yeah, yeah, no, I'm talking about overall. You can look at the touchdowns, but he also played, uh, what, 10 more games, nine more games, but that also doesn't warrant 30 more touchdowns. Yeah, right. So you, if, if you're worried about just touchdowns alone, saying that, well, you're saying that the, the mystery quarterback on the right is better, or do you think this is close enough that these quarterbacks are, you know, basically the same? Because May, May also has more passing yards a game, higher completion percentage, a better record. Just less yards per attempt and fewer touchdowns. Mm. Um, I mean that those uh, touchdown to uh, interception ratio to me is uh, so. You, so you think that's a pretty important? I would say the mystery quarterback is the winner in that comparison. I'd like to know what the QBR rating was for, for well, both the, of them. Well, the the college quarterback rating is is calculated differently for instance 158.3 is the highest for in the nfl we see you know college quarterback reigns there in the 180s or something mm -hmm. like that i'll reveal the mystery quarterback it's unc sam howell sam howell was a fifth round pick and i, I want to read some of the uh the, the scouting reports on both these quarterbacks because they're honestly a little bit similar so 
for Drake May, his scouting report is inefficient throwing motion creates inconsistencies in accuracy. Receivers had to chase too many intermediate throws into the turf. Uh, can get uncomfortable when initial reads aren't clear and clean. 16 career interceptions were mostly earned with poor decisions or throws. This one is kind of familiar if you've been following the Patriots the past two years. Tendency to make bad plays worse will run into sacks or throw head-scratching interceptions trying to save the play. Does that ring any bells for anyone? Mac Jones. Mac <laughs> Jones had that, that situation, especially this year. What about Sam Howell? Pat the ball and wind up slow. Uh, pat uh, pat ball and wind up slow the release. Uh, also, touch and timing both need work. That's that's similar to what we just heard about Drake May. Placement issues make receivers work hard. Lack accuracy on drive throws. Needs to trust his eyes and cut it loose. <coughs> Takes too many unnecessary sacks. Very similar on the weakness scale. Now, obviously, you could say that Drake May has a tremendous arm. He has he has better athletic ability. Although you look at the tendencies, they are you know a, a lot of the same. You also look at some of Sam Howell's highlights under the College Football YouTube channel. A lot of people say, best deep ball in college football at the time. And go on and on and on about it. So these quarterbacks are somewhat of the same. The stats-wise, the performance on the same team also, the same you know, uh, college is, you know, I would say a wash. The scouting reports are very, very similar for their weaknesses. Yet one is going, potentially, who was argued for most of this time, was the number two overall pick. That only has recently slid down to number three, maybe, because Jaden Daniels had a tremendous season last year. So it's quite interesting how one could be a fifth-round pick in a quarterback class that Kenny Pickett went, uh, went as the first quarterback at pick 20, and Sam Howe went in the fifth round. Yeah, Kenny Pickett is looking like a bust draft pick, huh? 100%. Yeah, he might get traded to the Eagles for, what, a fifth-round pick? And now Sam Howe is a backup to Geno Smith. Or who yeah. knows, he could compete for the starting job this season. Yeah, I don't all, think he all wins. All I know is... Sam Howell, and also their scouting rating is like .17 difference, which is basically the same. One is like an average quarterback in the NFL, and one's a boomer or bust candidate. What would you rather want, an average quarterback or a boomer or a bust? Boomer or a bust. You'd rather a boomer? You'd rather sure. take that shot. I have this. On the Patriots. Well, why do you, you want an want? average quarterback? An average quarterback you is not going to not gonna take you to the Super Bowl. Though. You know what you're getting, though, with an average quarterback. No, when you're I a think boomer or a bust yeah, candidate, yeah. you need Drake May would need a lot of help. And also, he no. did not have a great last season uh, with no. the Tar Heels. Like, it, it wasn't you, wound up a, you wind up a boom. 24 touchdowns, If nine you wind picks. up a boom, then, then your team will be very criticized for not taking him. What if you're a bust, though? Which a lot of these first-round quarterbacks yeah, are. You know, that, that happens. That happens more than not. That happens more than not. The boom candidates are rare. Right. Right. So how so many, take a how many quarterbacks, quarterbacks How many quarterbacks that take their teams to the Super Bowl are average quarterbacks? Hmm? Name one. I mean, if here's one. Trent Dilfer. He wasn't even that a was, good quarterback. Yeah, but that was like ages ago. That's you, okay. you say, give me a quote. Yeah, okay, that's recent. one. That's Recently. one. That's how one. There have been almost 60 Super Bowls How now. would you feel about how many, Jared how many, Goff? Jared Goff, when he Jared was with the Goff, Lions. Oh, sorry, when he was with the Rams, not with the Lions. With I, the I Rams, think he grew into a he good was, quarterback. He, he would, I think he was a good quarterback at the Rams, and they ruined him. You think? Yeah. <laughs> I, he did I, take him to the Super Bowl. I, Todd, he took him to the Super Bowl. I'm not disagreeing with that. Todd Gurley had a tremendous year that year. You can't dispute that. And no, also, uh, I'll give him credit. He played. He outplayed Mahomes in the greatest Monday night game I probably have ever seen. Yeah. So he had his moments. But now, on the Lions, he's much more consistent. There's a reason Sean McVay got off of him. Better coaching. You think Dan Gamble is better coached? Uh, uh, coached he's not Jack the offensive Huff. coordinator. Uh, oh, Dan so Gamble is not the offensive okay, coordinator okay. or the quarterbacks coach. I think uh, Jared Goff has benefited Fair. from being at the Lions. Fair. And they no, didn't treat him. Yeah. Even Sean McVay said he didn't treat. Uh, he he has regrets about the way he treated uh, Jared Goff. He was also used as a contractual yeah. throwaway piece yeah. in that trade for Matt right. Stafford. Yeah. But I would think honestly, the fact and that's the big thing. You have a top three pick in the draft. And in a, in a draft class that's filled with wide receiver talent, offensive line talent, and quarterback talent, and especially at number three, you just got off of your starting quarterback that you drafted 15 three years ago. Now it's four years ago. You have to love the candidate. That's why the Bears took that long, supposedly, to trade Justin Fields. They were going to do their due diligence on Caleb Williams in order to make sure that he was going to be their long-term solution at quarterback, which, newsflash, Based on Chicago's history, no quarterback will ever be a game changer in Chicago. Caleb Williams might flip that script. But you have to fall in love with the quarterback. And if you don't love him at number three, 
There's a team right now that is two first-round picks that is desperate for a quarterback because I guarantee you they are not going to want. They might have to, but they're not going to want to start the season with Sam Darnold as their starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. Also, a lot of scouts say that you might not even want to start Drake May in his first season because Mm -hmm. he needs a lot of work. Okay, so... Now let's look at it. No, let's look at it from Minnesota's point of view, right? Not just the Patriots' point of view. They have the 11th and the 23rd pick. They're going to make the same assessment that the Patriots are going to make. They're going to look at the first two picks, see who got taken. They have an idea of who they think the uh, the, is the quarterback that they want. If that quarterback is gone, they're going to say, "Well, do we like JJ McCarthy? Do we like uh, uh, Bo Nix? Do we like Michael Penix?" Do we think they'll be around? One one of those three will be around at pick number 11. Yeah, they will be. Okay, so hang on to the 23rd pick. Why give it up? Well, here's the big thing. Yeah, they should stay at 11 and 23 unless right. they, unless uh, uh, Daniels or May. Williams uh, okay. falls to number three. And if they do, then the Patriots are going to take one. So I think Minnesota is going to wind up still with 11 or, and 23. Well, here's the big unless thing. Unless they really yeah. feel like. Those three quarterbacks, or they don't like two of them, right? Right, are going to be gone at number eleven, and I don't think they will be. They'll be maybe two. Two of them should be there by pick eleven, I think. Well, here's the big thing: Josh McCown and also uh, Kevin O'Connell. Um, they apparently, according to this quote here by Alec Lewis of the Athletic, the Vikings adore Drake May. So this could be a situation uh, where the uh, Patriot. It's not even that you're falling out of the first round. It's not like you're trading for two of next year's first-round picks. You could potentially get two first-round picks in this draft. And if you do that, you have an opportunity to capitalize on, because I think the Giants are the massive question mark here, because they're really the first team that's going to draft a quarterback outside of the top three. So if the Giants go, let's say they go wide receiver offensive line, that means you still have the three options of J.J. McCarthy, Drake, uh, J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix, and Bo Nix. And in my opinion, I still love Bo Nix. I like Bo Nix out of those top three. Yeah, I would go Bo Nix, JJ, and then Michael Penix personally. But if if the Vikings really offer you, and I don't care about next year's second round, next year's third, if you have the opportunity to get this year's 11th and 23rd overall picks, and you don't love Drake May, that's a 100% sure no question. We'll take your two first round picks. Just take the number three pick. They draft Drake May because your team's not built for Marvin Harrison. Your team's not built uh, you, like drafting offensive lineman that high when the quarterback is your glaring need. You're probably not going to go with an offensive lineman. But that 23rd pick, you can get, I'm not going to say it's a top tier offensive lineman, but you can get an offensive lineman there. You might be able to get a tier, I would say, B plus wide receiver. And you may fill a massive hole there. You can fill two holes in one singular round yeah. and have the rest of the draft to fill other depth pieces mm-hmm. that you might need. Well, who else could potentially take a quarterback besides the uh, the Bears, the Commanders, the Patriots, and the Giants? Who else in the top uh, 10 there? Is uh, there anybody else that might take it. a quarterback? That's it. Arizona's going to go wide receiver most yeah. likely. Chargers need a wide receiver after getting rid of their top two. Tennessee needs an offensive line. They had one of the worst. I think they had the, the worst or the second worst offensive line in the NFL. Yeah. Atlanta's probably going to go defense. I have them yeah. drafting They're Dallas Turner go right now. They just signed right. uh, uh, Kirk, uh, Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Chicago so might go did. tight end. They might go receiver. They may go offensive line. So that's another. And then the Jets are, pro- I, the Jets are a huge question mark. Are they going to draft a quarterback that high? To back up Aaron Rodgers. They could do that, but could most do that. likely, most likely because Tyron Smith's only on a one-year deal, they'll draft an offensive lineman. Then, lo and behold, here you are at Minnesota or uh-huh. the Patriots maybe so, uh, at number Dr- 11. So, Drake May, uh, J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, and uh, Michael, Michael Penix. Penix, four quarterbacks. There's probably only two two spots. Yeah. Yeah, after that. So, the two of those, got two out of the four are definitely going to be there. And that's if the Giants draft a quarterback. That's if they draft a quarterback. Which they might not because I, you have you, there, there's no reason to have Tommy DeVito, uh, oh, what's, uh, Drew Locke, and Daniel Jones, and then a rookie quarterback. You're, there's a reason you signed uh Well, that would be DeVito would be out. You would think DeVito would be out if you draft a quarterback. Yeah. Although, I don't know why the they, I, we sucks. talked about this last show. Yeah. I don't know why the Giants traded, uh, went out and signed uh, Drew Locke. I don't understand it personally. For me, 
I think they're going to go offensive line or receiver, most likely receiver, because they don't really have... They signed Isaiah Hodges either today or yesterday, so they brought back a fan favorite there. But is he a difference maker? No. Will he be a difference maker? Probably not. Yeah. Does the offensive line still suck? It is bottom 10? Yeah. Yeah. Is your defensive line still good, and that's what you spent most of your money on free agency? Yeah. So, if if I I mean... It's a very Bill Belichickian move to trade back. But if you can still get a top quarterback talent, which this draft is filled with them, yeah. and then on the back half of the first round, get a pretty prominent wide receiver, why not? I think if you can trade back and get two first rounders, one in 11, one in 23, That's pretty it's damn very, good. very enticing. Very enticing. And, uh, and I don't think yeah. it... Uh, if they don't do it at number three, right? If they don't do it with the Patriots, I don't think they will do it. Right. Uh, they ain't going to do it. The commanders are not budging because they don't have a quarterback right now. They traded away Sam Howell. Chicago traded away its starting quarterback, Justin Fields. Those two teams are not moving. And the big thing is that second pick for the Patriots, if, if they do get the 23rd pick, they right now have two tackles that I don't trust for the life of me. Connor McDermott, who wasn't great last year, and then they signed a guy, or they picked him up for age, a former Steeler, uh, Okafor. Okafor, yeah. Who was also, I think, the, I might get this wrong, but the 40th out of 50th tackle mm-hmm. in the NFL. He was, he was very, very poor. So. And is Trent Williams still with the Patriots, or is he gone? You mean Trent Brown? Trent Brown I wish sorry. they had Trent Williams. Yeah, Trent uh, no, Williams. <laughs> no. He, I believe he got signed by the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay. They got some, mat- I think they have two six foot eight, 300 plus linemen on each of those tackle sides. Wow. So. They're beefy in that position, but they're, yeah, the Patriots tackle situation is a massive, massive question mark. But I could also see the Patriots doing this. And this might be a very risky move, but they could be planning for the future. Let Jacoby Brissett or Bailey Zappi be the starter this year. You get Marvin Harrison at 3, or you get an offensive lineman at 11 and a wide receiver at 23. Let the Vikings draft Drake May or whoever else at 3. You build for next year. Because most likely with Jacoby Brissett or uh, Bailey Zappi, you're gonna have you're probably gonna have a top pick next year anyway. You can go out and get a Quinn Ewers, a uh, Shador Sanders, and you could do that way. I don't hate that idea, but I'd rather see immediate success after the past few seasons of complete and utter failure. Hi everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.